National Geographic is known for its extraordinary pictures. After more than 125 years, the magazine is now turning its eye toward a small group of photographers. As Jan Crawford shows us, they often capture what many of their colleagues might not because of who is behind the lens. When you hear about Iraq or Afghanistan, this is what most people imagine. But this is what National Geographic photographer Lindsay Adario also sees. Families in a Baghdad movie theater, a sunrise on a bridge. Adario is one of 11 award-winning women of vision, featured in a special National Geographic exhibition and new book celebrating their unique perspective as female photojournalists. It's not that men couldn't do these stories, they might just do them in a different way. Catherine Kane is the National Geographic's Vice President of Exhibitions. Some of the women say that they tend to be trusted more, that they think that there are stories and perspectives that they might be privy to that, that um, one of their male counterparts might not be able to get. There's a sensitivity in these photographs. The old friends bunking down in a nursing home, customers in a beauty shop in Zambia. But it's more than perspective. For some projects, only a woman would get entry, like the series on 21st Century Slaves by Jody Cobb. Women have a unique access to get into worlds that are absolutely closed to men. This photograph is from a red light district in India, where huge numbers of women are lured or sold into the sex industry. Cobb spent a year traveling across the world to report the story. Are there women now, like you can still picture them, like that their stories stay with you? Oh, I, I just absolutely. I know in India, my, my assistant and I would come out of the brothels and we'd sit in the car and we'd just cry. And then we said, right, okay. We have to do this. We're here for a reason. And that reason is that 40 million people are going to see these photographs. Another theme of the exhibit is courage. This photograph by Stephanie Sinclair shows a joyful girl who got a divorce at age 10 in Yemen, a blow against forced marriage. But the exhibit also reveals the courage of the photographers, especially those who work in conflict zones. In addition to her photographs from Yemen, Sinclair reported from Iraq and Afghanistan, as did Adario, who, while working for the New York Times, was kidnapped and beaten in Libya. Certainly in the case of conflict photographers, their lives have been at risk, but they feel very strongly that these are stories that they need to get. This is just a very small portion of the work that you've done. This is the tip of the iceberg of a 35-year of a career. When Cobb started as a newspaper photographer in the 1970s, those assignments for a woman were unthinkable. When I started out, I had to prove myself. I had to prove that I could do all the things that men could do, and not with just one man, but all, all men. Now, she says, women can do a diverse portfolio of work, from war zones to a photo of quiet beauty. For CBS This Morning, Jan Crawford, Washington. Just another reason why I like being a girl. Well, you know, <laughs> I grew up with National Geographic. Yeah, we, we saved all, did. all the copies, yes. of course, and it's wonderful when it's this true. story came out to know that so many of those photographs were taken by these incredible women photojournalists. Yeah. Yeah. That's a nice point. We all saved the National Geographic. Yes, we, yes did. we did.